Hey babe, remember all those mental issues I've been having? Well, I heard good things about this device. I think it can fix me in like one session, so I'm gonna go try it out real quick. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech vs. Psych, where we expand your mind through at-home neurotechnology. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant who left his cushy job with the Navy to bring you this information here on YouTube. So these are the 10 biggest mistakes that I see people make when they are doing at-home neurofeedback training. The first mistake is expectations about the amount of change in your brain function that you'll get with minimal training. I've seen too many people do one or two neurofeedback sessions and get upset and frustrated because they didn't get the results that they were looking for. Neurofeedback training is pretty similar to physical exercise where you should be doing your training on more days than you're doing rest, meaning that you know six days out of the week you should be do doing your training with one day out of rest. So in my program, I prefer that people do at least 10 sessions every 14 days. And the program is two months long. But the people that I see make the biggest impact in both changes in their brain waves and subjective experience of improvement in their mental function is that they are doing training every day, at least 20 minutes a day for two months. And the people that get the biggest, most profound experiences are doing an hour a day. So that's three 20 minute mind lift sessions a day for two months. So that gives you an idea of the amount of work that you should be putting into neurofeedback training if you want to get dramatic results. Number two is getting held up on scores. Now I know it's human nature, we want to beat our personal bests and if we're in a group we'll compare our scores to other people's scores, but there's a lot to take into context. We know that calibration actually affects the score outcome in a neurofeedback exercise a lot. Me for instance, I've been doing a 30 day Mendy challenge and I noticed that if I do the calibration right after I wake up and then do the Mendy exercise, I'll get much higher scores than if I do a meditation session and then do the Mendy exercise. And that's because if you think about the frontal lobe blood flow of the brain, which Mendy is measuring, if I do the calibration right when I wake up and then do the exercise, there's a lot more change, degree of change in blood flow during that session than if I've already activated my brain through a meditation session and then did the Mendy session. That doesn't mean that the second second Mendy session was bad, it just means that I got a less degree of change. So if you're getting lower scores, it could depend on the calibration. We know that different things can affect our brain from day to day, whether you stayed up late the night before, and then during the calibration, if you're spacing out during the calibration or looking at a specific object, all of these things can affect the scores. So it's important to take into context how you felt during the session, how the calibration was done, how many sessions you've done lately, and other things that can affect the scores. The scores can be a great estimate on how well you were doing, but should not be the only factor of feedback and source of data for creating goals to move towards for your neurofeedback training. Number three biggest mistake I see is not subscribing to this channel. Seriously, we've got a lot of great content on here. So hit the thumbs up so that the algorithm shares it with more people. Hit subscribe so that you have more information to get better at your neurofeedback training, which is a skill in of itself. And if you wanna see more behind the scenes activities, here to follow me on Instagram where you'll actually get a lot of content that you don't see here on YouTube, me setting up experiments, talking about different things that have happened in the neuro wearable field and things that are upcoming on Tech for Psych that you can take a look at. The number four mistake that I see is people getting frustrated by the technology. I know it's difficult enough just to sit down and meditate every day, but now you are incorporating this headset, you have software to worry about. Just trust me in that if you can get over the technical hurdles, getting your brainwave data is so helpful in accelerating your learning curve. And if you watch this video to this point, you're probably pretty invested in improving your mental function. So I encourage you to get over those barriers and get a lot of value out of these technologies. Number five is getting too focused on advanced techniques to affect the neurofeedback technology. I am so guilty of this because I try to pack as much advanced techniques into these videos as possible and on my brain circuit training program, but oftentimes people that are just getting started with it will get overwhelmed. So my general advice is that if you're just starting out, just sit down, 
focus on the screen, control your breathing, and be aware of the experience. If you just do that consistently day after day, your brain is going to learn how to affect what's happening on the screen subconsciously through operant conditioning, and you will make gains in that way. And if at a certain point you wanna add more, then you start layering on the advanced techniques. Number seven is not setting up a routine. I, again, I've seen too many people get excited to do neurofeedback training. They don't schedule it in and then it just gets away from them. They just don't get a good streak going, they get discouraged and they stop using the technology. I like to incorporate it into my morning routine where I get up, I do my neurofeedback session, then I go to the gym and then I come back and do my work. So I'm making sure to get it done before I get sucked up in the daily activities and I found it very helpful for myself. Number eight is trying to do it all alone. You don't have to do it alone. There's a lot of communities on Facebook and other social media that you can plug into to help get support and and accountability for doing your neurofeedback training. There's other people on there that are doing the same thing. They're posting their results, graphs from the neurofeedback exercises, asking questions, answering questions. That can be a very valuable resource for you to help feel like you're plugged into a community to make it more likely that you're gonna get a lot of value out of doing neurofeedback training at home. Number nine is becoming discouraged by faulty gear. It happens. These companies are doing their best to do quality control, but every once in a while, you are going to get a device that's not going to either get good EEG signal or the laser or the sensor for FNIRs is going to be messed up. And what's great is over the last couple of years that I've been doing this, I've seen these companies really beef up their customer support. So if you're having a lot of trouble with the connection and the programs telling you that it's not getting good data, be sure to take a look at their tips and troubleshooting techniques, you know, wetting those EEG sensors, making sure you don't have hair in the way and other things that can affect the signal. But in the end, if you do all those troubleshooting tips and you're still not getting a good signal, it could be that you have a faulty device. We know that Muse has had issues with their Bluetooth signal. On the Muse S, if you stretch the band too much, it can damage the electrodes, which will affect the signal. So if you get a device out of the box and it's just not working, it, but you really wanna do neurofeedback, don't get discouraged and just throw it in the trash and never do neurofeedback again. You might have to put in extra effort, but I assure you once you get a good setup going, you're really gonna enjoy it. And the number 10 mistake that I see is not asking questions because you feel like you're new to the field and you don't wanna ask dumb questions. We are all learning here. This is all very new to everyone on what the heck we do with brain data and how we can improve our mental function with it. So get on those discussion boards, ask questions, and on these Tech for Psych videos, ask questions too. I'm gonna to answer every question that is asked over the next two weeks on this video. So make sure you leave a comment and I will personally respond to each one over the next two weeks and it's gonna be a lot of fun and hopefully you get some value out of that as well. If you wanna find out more about my coaching program, there's a link below where you can send in an application to the Brain Circuit Training Program. If you want to watch a video where you learn more in depth about the MindLift system that I use with the Muse headband, check out this video and I'll see you on the other side.